everybody to uh, our first video. We are going to be walking through the Regional Skills Canada Competition Judging Handbook uh, that we put together. So first and foremost, I want to thank Ms. Scallion, who is our contact teacher, and thanks to her wonderful skills, we're going to be able to make this video. Uh, we will walk through each step uh, and show you what it is we want you to measure. Of course, you have the handbook available to you. So the video combined with the handbook hopefully uh, makes our life a lot simpler. All right, so the first thing we're going to cover is we need you to measure the width of the doghouse. And I want you to take your tape, hook it on to the outside corner of the wall, and bring your tape over to the outer edge of this other wall. What I need you to be careful of is that when you hook your tape on, that the corner of this tape is flat against the wall. If you let the curvature of the tape set up because of camera angles, we could be reading the wrong measurement. So just tilt your tape slightly and it'll be a nice accurate measurement and you will get the fairest judgment that we could. So for the width of our building, we're gonna take one sample up here, like the judging handbook states, we'd like you to take two samples. So I'm gonna measure the width of the building here. I'll read the number, the camera should pick up the number itself. And I'm gonna do the front wall, and then I'm gonna move around to the back wall. And I'm gonna do that, repeat that same step, reading the measurement, and the camera, of course, will be over here. Uh, for efficiency's sake, uh, Miss Gallion is taking the shots from there. So, one sample from the front wall, one sample from the back wall. We're going to take the sample that has the largest discrepancy and apply that to the rubric that we've given you, the marking rubric, and from there we'll decide uh, how many points that competitor is going to get for that measurement. So that's the width of the building. Number two is the length of our dog post. Same thing as what we did for the front, except now we're on the side wall, and I'm going to stretch it out and across making sure to tilt my tape so I have an accurate measurement here. Uh, we want you to measure up to where the plates are. So you can measure up top or you can measure down on the bottom. Again, we want two samples. Uh, try not to measure in the middle because if there's any curvature to these studs, uh, you're going to have a measurement that's not exactly what you wanted it to be. So on the side wall, I like to measure on the top. I'm going to read the measurement off. And then I'm going to do sample number two is to move to the opposite side wall. Hold your tape in the same place. So PTC members, as we're going to go through this, if I'm holding my tape at the top of the wall, because that's what I prefer to do, I need to do that on every doghouse that I judge. Okay, I don't want to take a top shot here and then on the next doghouse decide I'm going to take a bottom shot. So we'd like to get consistency uh, in your practice of measuring. So that covers the width and the length. Now, you're going to notice that I've taken the doghouse and I've lifted it on top of the two, lifted on top of the two sawhorses, and I find this uh, a lot easier so that we can get accurate shots of the measurements that we're after. And it saves you from having to bend down on your knees and get really low shots. So the next one is the height of the wall. And the height of the wall, I'm going to hook my tape onto the top of the top cap. And I'm going to bring the tape down until I can clearly read the height of the wall, which is to the top of the floor sheathing. So it's going to be a measurement from the cap down to where the floor sheathing starts. Again, I want two samples, so uh, I choose to measure the front of this one, and I'm going to take my second sample from the opposite wall, opposite corner. If you go diagonally, I do the exact same process, take the read, the two measurements, I remember both measurements, and I take the measurement with the greatest discrepancy to apply the marking rubric to. So that'll be the height of our walls. The next thing that we need you to measure is the eave overhang or roof projection. And you need to take your tape, please be very careful. 
that the tape is 90 degrees is perpendicular to the wall and the camera angle needs to come down from the top so that we can clearly see the measurement and we'll know what that overhang measures out at. Uh, you could, I suppose, measure across the top and take that same shot, but what you need to be careful of is that your tape is perpendicular to the wall. If I have it at any sort of angle at all, it's going to skew the measurement over here and not really give me an accurate measurement of what that actual overhang was. And again, two samples, so uh, for the sake of our video, I'm going to take a shot from the top. I read this measurement. Again, I'm making sure the edge of the blade is right up to the outside point. And I'm going to move over to the opposite diagonal corner. Same thing, tape is up against the outside wall. I'm making sure it's perpendicular. I read the measurement. Take the largest, again, discrepancy of those two measurements. And that's how we're going to determine what that competitor got for a mark. The next one is the gable, and the gable overhang, you can hook your tape to the outside of the barge rafter and measure to the outside of the rafter, not the inside, you measure to the outside, and I can take a shot at the top, take a shot at the bottom, and again, I've taken these two measurements here, and I'm going to move over to the diagonal, and I'm going to do that, repeat that same process, taking the larger discrepancy of the two. That will give me the eave overhang, and it gives me the gable overhang. Next on our list is the rafter centered on the ridge and the side walls. So what we need to know is how accurately they centered this rafter on the roof. And again, I'd like you to hang your tape to the outside of the barge rafter and measure to the inside of the rafter here. The reason I'm saying inside because we get used to doing it that way. There's different shots in here where it's easier to measure to the inside. So I'm going to go from the outside to the inside. I read that measurement and then I'm going to repeat that from the opposite side. So I'm on the outside of the barge here and then I'm on the outside of the barge and I'll read the measurement again to the inside of the rafter. And if those two measurements are identical, we know that this rafter is centered on the ridge plate. We also need to know if it's centered on the wall down here. So again, just for ease of measuring, I'm going to hold it on to the outside of the barge rafter here, and I'm going to take my measurement to the inside of the rafter, and I'm going to flip it over and take the measurement to the inside over here. And the discrepancy between these two measurements will tell me how far the rafter is off center. If they're identical, then it's on center. It gets full points. If it's off by one or two mils, then I go to the rubric and decide how much of a deduction that becomes. So in this case here, I measure the center of the rafter here and here. If I wanted to, I could quickly just step to the other side of the building and check the top, flip it over, check the top from the other side. Again, because of time constraints, two samples is usually enough for us to judge uh, and a fair judgment of how the building was going together. Our next one that we want to do is to check the studs. And this time around, you're going to be moving around the building and it's a little bit more measuring. So I'm going to check to the top and I'm going to measure to the inside of the stud. I'm going to reverse it, repeat that. Now, just for camera safety, I'm going to try and get out of the shot. So I'm on the outside and I measure to the inside here again. That's the top of the stud. I'm going to do it at the bottom of the stud very quickly and see what I've got. These measurements should be identical. And I come to the bottom. I gotta be careful when I say identical. If this stud is sitting at an angle, it won't be identical. If your stud is centered, yes, it will. So, again, to the outside, inside of the stud, turn the tape over, outside of the wall, inside of the stud. Move to the other side. We have to do each wall this time. So, I'm gonna do that on the back wall. Hang my 
tape on the outside, measure to the inside of the stud, and then I'm going to turn the tape around, measure from the outside of the wall to the inside of the stud, and I'm going to do it down on the bottom. And again, outside to inside, outside to inside. Take the difference of those measurements, and that's how far that stud is out. Now, because we're doing three walls for one particular set of marks here, we got to try to remember what the discrepancy in marks are. And I'm going to move around to the other side, and just like I did over there, I would do it to the side wall. And at this point, I'll know how well all of these studs were centered. The next step is to measure the depth of the bird's mouth. Uh, this one gets pretty tricky because I tried to put a ruler in there, I tried to put a measuring tape in there and everything blocks uh, the camera angle and Miss Scallion has this set up. So if you can set your camera up where it's shooting that same angle, uh, what we're looking for is that the bottom of the plum cut is in line with the bottom of the cap plate and it fits nice and tight against the cap plate here because your cap plate is 38 mils. Uh, we would know that you've made the plum cut of the bird's mouth 38 mils. And again, we're gonna want two samples. So take a shot of your rafter in the middle and I would take a shot of the rafter. If I can see this one over here, that's great. Uh, but we do want two samples of the bird's mouth. So again, I can take a shot from the middle here. I can go across, the camera could move with me, and I would take a look at the bird's mouth on the opposite corner, and it gives me that second sample. And again, you want it to be a nice, tight camera shot so that the PTC members uh, will have a chance to see how accurately that was cut. In order to put a tape and a, a straight edge in here, it gets really complicated on how I'm going to measure that. So nice tight camera shots, that'll help us out. And that'll be our bird's mouth for 38 mils. For the height of the ridge board, I want you to take your tape, place it on to the top of the cap here, and hold the blade nice and tight up against the top of the ridge board. So I can take that reading and that'll tell me uh, whether or not the height of the ridge board is placed where it needs to be. Again, two samples. So my first sample, take here, hold it steady and read the tape. Please make sure your tape is perpendicular up and down. If I have that tape at an angle, it skews the measurement. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And again, making sure that the blade on the metric side is what's tight against the edge that I'm measuring so we have an accurate measurement. Okay, so number 10 is we want a total rafter line length. So what we're looking for is the actual total rafter line length, which is going to be right from the top of your rafter here down to the heel. So I make sure my tape's hooked on to the top. I stretch it out. And for marking purposes, the tape needs to be tight against the top edge of my rafter, right where the pencil's showing and we'll take that reading. That'll give you the line length of this rafter. Like everything else, I want two samples, so I'm gonna to move to the other side, and I'm just choosing to do the back rafter here. Same idea, I'm tight at the top, and I measure down to the bottom side, the eave side of my rafter. I can do any one of these three rafters, but please make two measurements, note the largest discrepancy, and that's what we're gonna use for a score. Now we're into the second half and that's construction of the building itself and what we're looking for in step number one is the correct orientation of the skids and so we're going to be looking for the end of the skids being flush with the floor and the side of the skid so the edge of the skid, skid being flush with the plywood as well and uh, a shot from the corner here so that we can see that you in fact have a 45 degree angle cut on the bottom of four, all four ends of the skid. Also inside this part is we have a spreader that's underneath here and it had to have a 100 mil setback on it. So I'm just gonna poke my tape in until I feel it butt up to the outside edge of that skid. And then I'm gonna shoot straight down so I can see how far a setback that we have. Now we want you to take a shot from both sides. 
come down here, come down here, take a shot. And if it's reading 100 to the edge of the plywood on both sides, that's going to score full. And I'm going to repeat that same step on the back side of the building as well. So I would go around to the back side, do the same thing, push it underneath until it hits that spreader and read that. And then we'll take the largest discrepancy between those two spreaders and we'll mark with that. The second step of our construction is the correct orientation of our top and bottom plates. And from this camera angle, I can see the end of the top plate on the side wall, meaning that the top plate of my end wall fits in between the plate here and there, and that is the correct orientation. Again, I can see the end of the plate here, so I know that this particular set of plates is orientated the way that it should be. And of course, our back wall is looking the same. I can see the end of this side wall, and I can see that the end walls have been framed in between the two side walls, and that's what we were after. So that'll be the orientation of the wall plates that we were looking for. Number four is the correct orientation of the corners. And what we're looking for is we can see the face of the stud here and the inside. So from that particular camera angle, the in, can you see this? Uh, right there, yeah, I can. So the inside of this vacuum plate faces the inside of the wall. All four corners are expected to be framed in that way. So when I look around the building, all four of these corners, the vacuum is facing the inside of the wall, and that's what we're after. So the orientation of the corners is correct. Number five is the rough opening of the door frame. And what we're looking here is not so much for the measurement itself at this level, but the measurement being identical. So I'm gonna measure across the top from the inside to the inside of my top of my door, and then I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna take that same measurement to the bottom of the door, and they're identical. And I'm also gonna measure from the bottom up to the top on the right-hand side, take that measurement, and I'm gonna move over and I'm gonna take the same shot from the other side. And what we're looking for is that these two measurements are the same vertically and horizontally. On that same step, we're also looking for that the joints are snug. They're nice and tight. The header is flush to the outside of the wall here, and the header is flush to the inside of the wall. So for sake of video, this one is flush to the outside of the wall. So the face of the header is flush to the edge of the top plate. Same with the stud and the trimmer stud. This is all nice and tight and flush. That would be, so that's what we're looking for. The tighter, the better. We come down here, there's a little bit of a space down here. So this particular stud isn't sitting as tight as it probably could be. And if I look over to here, this is tight to here. And the plate is just a tiny little slide out. This becomes, uh, a call that you're going to make. Now on this particular one, everything here is fairly tight except for down here. So I might go a half point or a point deduction, meaning that it could be a little bit tighter in this case. But that's what we're looking for as far as the rough opening goes for the door. Okay, so now we're on to number six. We're looking for a wall framing. Uh, the joints are tight. So again, I'm looking for the connection between the side wall and the end walls. Uh, as I pointed out earlier, this is a little bit loose. And I come to this side and it's a little bit loose here. We would like to see that to be as tight as it can. We're also looking for the tightness of the walls at the top, the caps, and everywhere that the walls make a connection, we're looking for the tightness of that. Same as we're judging for the tightness of that, we're looking for the tightness of the stud against the wall plates itself. Uh, that will tell us how square that the cut is and how tight they got it together. So if we take a very quick look on where our studs joined all of our plates 
and make a judgment call from there as to how well it's done. Uh, this particular one has nice tight fits against the top and the bottom. Uh, nothing that we would decide is loose. So for number seven, we're looking to see uh, how accurate the line is of the rough fascia uh, relative to the top of our rafter. I would take a framing square at this point because it's nice and long and set the blade of the framing square on top of the rafter, hold it down nice and straight, and we're going to be looking for any space that we see between here and here. Again, we want two samples. Um, I choose the center one here. You can tell when I originally started this, the rafter, the gable end rafter is slightly up a little bit. We actually are looking for this type of an effect where the blade is not lifted off of the rafter. It's nice and tight all the way down. And the outer edge of our fascia is touching the rafter itself. Again, two samples. If I did this rafter here, I would come over, I can pick any rafter at random, do the exact same thing. And again, we're looking for how tight the blade sits up against the outer corner of our fascia. So number eight is the cut and fit of the bird's mouth to the cap plate. And if you remember in our first section where we were looking for the depth of the bird's mouth, you would want that same camera angle again where Miss Gallion had it coming in at an angle here. And we would be able to see the seat cut, how tight it sits against the plate, and the plum cut. So we're looking for the tightness of these cuts. If, we, uh, if the seat cut is cut the way that it needs to be, and so is the plum cut, you'll get a very nice tight fit here. And same with the length of the rafters, if they're the correct length, all of this will be tight. Tight meaning that I can't see any space in between. Again, with the tightness of the bird's mouth, we're looking for two fasteners. So I should have, here I have one fastener, so I'll check the other side, and there's only one fastener. And what we're looking for is two fasteners on one side and one fastener on the other side for the correct process of fastening this in place. At the top, uh, there'd be two fasteners that came in to secure the rafter here, and I can clearly see one, two fasteners holding the rafter on the other side. So this particular one has the right fasteners there. Not so much here, there's only one fastener on each side. So number nine, the cut and fit of the rafters to the ridge board, and we're looking for tightness between the top of the rafter and the bottom of the rafter up against the ridge board. And we're also looking for the top of the rafter to be flush with the top of the ridge board. Okay, so number 10, we're looking for the cut and fit of the barges and the rafters to our fascia boards. So on the barge rafter, on the plumb cut here, we would be looking for this joint here to be nice and tight, same as on the front and the back. We're also looking for the back cut here where it's flush with the bottom of the outside fascia. I'm also going to be checking for the tightness of the plumb cut at the bottom of the rafter, just like the step before we were checking the top, now we're checking the bottom to make sure it's nice and tight uh, around the building. And once we see all of that, we would like to have a camera angle coming down where it catches the line of this particular rough fascia. If this appears on camera that it's nice and straight uh, from that, we can we can assume that the rafters are all cut the same length. Uh, we measured them earlier, so if they were the right measurement, this will show up as a nice straight line. The final part that we're looking for, so you have a shot coming down the board here, and then we're gonna take a shot here. Uh, Miss Kelly can't get around to take this shot, it's too tight. But what we're looking for is where the barge rafter fits up tight against the end of the rough fascia. And again, we're looking for that to be a nice tight fit on all four corners. I'm gonna check this corner, the back corner, and we'll walk around, and we'll quickly take shots of both these corners and make sure that the board hasn't been tilted away from the rough fascia. 
And again, as I pointed out earlier, we've got a nice straight line going down the side. We know that the building was built as well as it possibly could be. That wraps up how we're going to go about scoring the particular building itself. This is a judgmental call and a very good colleague of mine, um, we call him Cabby. Alan had come up with a great idea that if I had given you $100 to buy this particular project, out of that $100, what would you be willing to spend? So if I took a look at this particular project and I'm fairly happy with what I'm seeing, I might decide that I would spend 95 of those $100 and that would be my point value that I'm gonna give it to. I might decide that, eh, you know what, $82, it's a number, it's a subjective number, but be very honest with what you're looking at and it's called saleability. So we're looking for any defects that might show up. Is there a uh, live edge that is exposed that maybe didn't have to be exposed? Again, it's a judgmental call, okay? Safety and clean work environment, as is in the instructions, there is an evaluation that will be made by the PTC member. Uh, and material usage, Again, that particular judgment is going to be made by the presiding PTC member. So I hope you enjoy the handbook. I hope it really helps to make this a little bit easier on how we're going to go about judging. I can't say enough how much I appreciate Ms. Gallion's help with doing this. Um, she's amazing at her job, to say the least. Thank you, and we'll see you at the competition.